Hey guys, so I'm gonna start working with Merlin today. Come in. Come on. Come here, boy. We're gonna start working on introducing him to pressure and teaching him how to lead. So hopefully all goes well. Um, yeah, we're gonna see if we can get this halter on him though. This is Merlin's second day of haltering practice. I probably halted him about a dozen times on the first day and he did really well. So we're moving on and now I'm gonna be teaching him pressure and release, which is not a form of positive reinforcement. I normally take the halter off and then put it back on whenever I start, just so I can get the extra practice. All right, come here, sir. You're out of frame, dude. All right, whatever, I'm just gonna put the lead rope on. I do want to mention that clipping the lead rope on like that probably wouldn't have worked for too many other Mustangs, some yes, but oftentimes you have to really work on desensitizing them to the sound of that clip before putting it on. We started out with Merlin pretty much just following me around in the round pen. So then I started to put a little bit of pressure on him from the side. As soon as he took a step towards me right there, I gave him a big release. And then I asked again, and each time that he moved towards me, I gave him a big release. So right here, he didn't necessarily step towards me, but he did look in my direction, which is the first step of him coming up towards me. So I gave him that big release. I want to try to make it as easy as possible for him to have success early on, and then I'll start asking for more and more. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I just want to let you know that this is not training advice or tutorial. This is me. I'm a project equestrian and I'm just sharing my journey as I'm figuring out this process of training Mustangs. So this is just me sharing my experience. It's kind of funny. I feel like I have to give some sort of disclaimer. The YouTube world is definitely a dangerous place to be, especially if you're learning something. And yeah. so. I'm sorry I keep repeating myself, but I kind of feel like it's necessary. What you're watching is me trying to figure things out right now. If I look a little bit lost and confused, it's because I am. Merlin is really following me around. You can see him kind of nosing my glove. I think he's a little bit confused as to why we're not doing um, positive reinforcement and targeting. What am I going to do with you? Because Merlin was being so good and really just following me around, it really threw a wrench in my plans for the day, so I had to kind of think about my approach. Okay, to be completely honest, sometimes these horses just throw you off. Um, wasn't really sure what to expect with him, but he's so far being really good. Um, he's not really learning to come off pressure just yet because he is following me. He's used to being in this position where I've been working with him uh, with a positive reinforcement. So he's really more just following me around and not actually coming off the halter just yet. There were a couple instances where he did, um, but yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have to switch it up, think outside the box a little bit, just so I can figure out another way to make him work and learn to like feel a little, put him in a spot where he can actually feel a little bit of pressure. Um, I think what throws me off the most is when the horse is really good because then you're like, oh, whoa, I wasn't expecting this. Now what do I do? And I don't have a plan. That's the, been the hardest part for me. So we'll try moving on a little bit. One of the biggest lessons I've learned with training Mustangs is that you have to be a problem solver and you have to be very adaptable. I went back in with a plan to do something a little bit different. However, once I went back to work with him, he wasn't quite as readily following me around at this point, so that was a really good opportunity for me to go back into my pressure and release. So I'm using a very light pressure to start, and I'm trying to keep things really calm and low-key, and I really don't want to get into a tug of war with him because I'll lose every single time. So I'm focusing more on just being persistent and giving him those releases to let him know he's done the right thing. Um, and I'm really just taking it step by step. Each time I have to put pressure, if he steps forward, I give a release and eventually it'll get smoothed out and he'll be leading beside me consistently. He's still reaching out to my glove. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that's 
him targeting because I don't teach targeting with the nose or if he's just trying to sniff it because they're an unusual glove. But either way, while he is touching my glove sometimes, there are other times when I am able to put pressure on him and he is responding to that. Wow, look at that. It's amazing. You're amazing, Merlin. Oh, that was that was quite shocking. Very shocking. Um, wow. I'm I'm really shocked. Like he he actually seems like he's really getting a feel for it. Um, so early on, I was rewarding even even if he just moved his head towards me, I was giving him a release. Um. Even though he wasn't moving forward or moving his body towards me, it was a step in the right direction. Um, and then when I when I try to pull him off the side, that, that just kind of um, like pull him at an angle. That just kind of gets him in a place where he can't balance himself to, to pull against me quite as well. So usually what happens is they'll turn their head or they'll step towards you a little bit. And he was started doing that and then I gave him a big release. Um, there was a couple times he did really well and I just kind of stopped and I scratched him. So, very pleased. Oh my gosh. Wow. I think he's gonna fly. He, I mean, already he's doing so well. I think he's gonna start flying through his training. I really like this horse. Oh my gosh. He's so cool. I added a couple of objects to the round pen so that I could practice doing some figure eights or smaller circles around each object. Really more for myself as a test to see if he really was coming off of my pressure and following direction or if he was just walking in a circle following me. And he was able to go through. Um, of course, this is his very first day, so he's not leading like a domesticated horse would, but he's doing really, really well. The way he is coming off that pressure and following my directions. He did have a few moments where he went off course, but I was able to bring him back. You can see that I'm not engaging in a tug of war with him, but I'm rather just being persistent with that light pressure. And I'm kind of moving with him a little bit and just not giving him that release until he comes forward towards me. So far this session has not been what I expected which is normal because things usually don't go as expected. But I am very happy with how he is responding to this. As Merlon continues to get better, I am thinking about the next thing. One of the first things that I'm planning on teaching him is how to move his hindquarters, move his forequarters, and back up. Really to just get a little bit more control and kind of as a safety feature as I continue to work with him. These were some of the first things that I taught Frida and Libby and they were really helpful actually for improving their ability to lead and come off pressure and pretty much everything. <laughs> I was actually a little bit happy to see this. You can see him resisting and it was good because I could really see that he was coming off the pressure that I was putting on. All right. Ooh. He did really, really well. So I'm gonna give him a break. Um, that was what, maybe half an hour of work? And he's doing amazing. So I'm gonna give him a break, a little brain break, and then we'll come back out. All right, so I'm gonna do round two of um, leading and now I'm gonna start trying to loosen up his hindquarters and get him to um, yield them to me. All right, so here I'm putting my attention on his hindquarters and I'm really looking for his left back leg to cross over in front of his right, just like that. When he does the action I'm looking for, I straighten up my body and go into more of a neutral position. So here I'm crouching forward, putting the pressure on and then stand up once he's done the correct thing. So he's really learning to read my body and is already catching on pretty quickly. I would say this is one of the easier things for me to teach a horse. I've never really had um, problems teaching a horse how to understand what I'm asking here. So 
It usually goes pretty quickly. I usually try to make sure I have a sizable break in between each time that he does it. Again, I'm looking for that crossover when I'm asking for this, so I'm looking for his left hind leg to cross over the right hind. For anyone wondering, bingo does not mean anything. I just, <laughs> I don't know, I used it. But okay, so I do wanna make sure that I'm doing both sides. So after I taught it on the other side, I switched sides and now I'm teaching him and looking for that crossover of his right hind to go over the left hind. And there it is. Merlin did fantastic on his first day of basic groundwork. I'm really proud of him. I do want to remind you that while things have gone pretty smoothly so far, he's still a wild mustang and we still have many challenges ahead. That's all for today's video, but this is a quick preview of some things to come. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.